Do you like the book so far? Yeah. And our yeah. chapter tonight is Jenny's Adopted Brothers. <clears throat> the little black cat, Jenny Linsky, sat down beside the rose bush in her master's garden. The roses were in bloom, the birds were singing, and the sun shone brightly. How lucky I am to have this garden and a master like the captain, thought Jenny. I wish every cat could have the nice things that I have. It's a good thing to think. At that moment, Jenny was surprised to see a black and white cat sitting alone in a corner of the garden. There's a cat I've never seen before, continued Jenny. He looks as if maybe he wanted something. He's bigger than I, but maybe I can help him. Jenny straightened the red scarf she was wearing and ran over to the stranger. Hello, she said. My name is Jenny Linsky. What's yours? The stranger removed a red ball he was holding in his mouth, and he said, My name is Checkers. Checkers what? asked Jenny. I can't remember my last name, said Checkers. So much has happened to that I've forgotten lots of things. Checkers is a very pretty name, said Jenny in a comforting voice. And it's a good name for you, she added, as she examined the furry black checks on his thin white legs. But you look hungry. Don't they feed you at home? I haven't any home, said Checkers. No home, cried Jenny. Oh, it isn't fair. Why, Checkers, I have this lovely garden and that brick house with the ivy on it, and my master, Captain Tinker, is the nicest master in the world. As she gazed at Checkers' darling heart-shaped face, she had a bright idea. Checkers, she said, I'm Captain Tinker's only cat. If you'll come home with me, I'll ask the captain to adopt you. Thank you, cried Checkers joyfully. I'll go with you as soon as Edward comes. Edward, who is he? asked Jenny. Edward is my big brother, replied Checkers. His last name is Brandywine. We met when both of us lost our homes, and we've been brothers ever since. Where I go, Edward goes too. Checkers, sighed Jenny. Maybe my master isn't rich enough to adopt two. But Jenny didn't have time to finish her sentence. Edward had heard his name, and he came hurrying out of the bushes. He was a tiger cat with broad white chest and beautiful eyes. But in those eyes was the sad look of cats who have no home. Edward, said Checkers, this is Jenny Linsky. She's going to ask her master, Captain Tinker, to adopt us. Just then a bell rang in the garden. That's the captain calling me to lunch, explained Jenny. Checkers picked up his red ball and started towards the captain's house. But Jenny said, wait. It isn't easy to get two cats adopted. We must work out a plan. She hard, thought hard for a moment, and then she said, I have it. I'll try to get you adopted one at a time. Jenny, begged Edward, please try to get Checkers adopted first. He's smaller than I and very hungry. I'll wait outside your house until you call me. If you don't call me, I'll know the captain hasn't enough room for me. Edward! cried Checkers. Didn't you and I promise to stick together? Edward gazed up towards the point where the tall buildings of the city scraped the sky. His right nostril twitched. I smell a storm, he murmured. By night we shall have rain. Then he looked tenderly at Checkers and said, Another night in the cold rain might make you sick. Please go with Jenny into Captain Tinker's house. Show him the retrieving trick I taught you. I'm sure he'll adopt you when he sees how nicely you retrieve. Retrieve? What's that? asked Jenny. To retrieve means to run after something and bring it back, explained Checkers. Oops, that was the wrong voice. I'll start over. To retrieve means to run after something and bring it back, explained Checkers. This red ball I carry everywhere is my retrieving ball. At that moment, the lunch bell sounded for the second time. We must cap the, keep the captain waiting, said Jenny. Checkers, when we get home, you must retrieve for us. The three cats ran towards Captain Tinker's house. On the way, Jenny asked Edward, Can you retrieve too? No, he answered. There is no trick that I can do. 
but someday, if I should find a home that has a little office in it, I should like to write. Write what? asked Jenny. Write about the troubles I've had, replied Edward. He wants to be a writer of books. That's cute, huh? When the cats reached the house, Edward crawled into the bushes near the open window, and Jetty led checkers through the window into the living room. Captain Tinker, who was an old sailor, was sitting in his armchair, waiting for Jetty. He must have been surprised to see her bringing home a black and white cat with a heart-shaped face who held a red ball in his mouth. But the captain was polite to cats. He let Jenny speak first. She whispered to Checkers, Retrieve! Checkers passed his ball to Jenny. Hit it hard, he said. She batted it across the floor. He bounded after it, caught it with his teeth, returned with it, and laid it at the captain's feet. The captain said to Checkers, That was the most beautiful retrieving I've ever seen, and such a pretty ball. Checkers whispered to Jenny, Hit the ball again. I must retrieve some more to help get Edward adopted. But Captain Tinker picked up the ball, and looking thoughtfully at Checkers said, You're hungry, and a red ball never filled an empty stomach. You must stay and eat some lunch with Jenny. After that, why, after that, you may live with us forever, if you wish. <gasps> Checkers, cried Jenny happily. You've been adopted. Now I'll call Edward. She turned toward the window. To her surprise, she saw that Edward had come to the window so without waiting to be called. On his striped face, there was a look that Jenny had never seen on any cat. It was the look of a cat gazing at something warm and beautiful, which he may have to leave because he is not wanted. Oh, thought Jenny, the captain mustn't send Edward away. It would break his heart. I must speak to the captain about this and try to make him understand. Jenny was on the point of jumping onto her master's knees to plead for Edward when the captain caught sight of the face at the window, and he saw Checkers glance quickly at the face. Then Checkers sat very straight and still, like someone wishing hard for something to come true. These two cats belong together, murmured Captain Tinker. Without another word, he walked to the window and pulled Edward gently into the room. In that way, Edward was adopted. Is that good? What do you think? Good. Is that nice? Are you happy? Mm -hmm. Well, afterward, the captain took off Jenny's scarf and hung it on its hook. He put Checker's red ball in a glass bowl on the shelf above the scarf. Then the captain said to Edward, You haven't a red ball, and you haven't a red scarf. But you shall soon have something red, so that everyone will know you are one of us. After lunch, I'll make you a red leather collar. My, thought Jenny, how quickly things have happened. My brothers came. They were adopted. What will happen next? Jenny and her brothers followed Captain Tinker into the kitchen. There he put two extra plates on Jenny's feeding tray and filled all of the plate, three of the plates with carrots and beef. Ooh, does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. The brothers could not believe their eyes. It was so long since they had seen a meal like this. They tried to purr their thanks to Captain Tinker, but their purrs got mixed in with their food. Each mouthful that the brothers ate put new life into their tired bodies. When lunch was over and they had washed their faces, Checkers and Edward looked like happy cats, and Jetty no longer felt sorry for them. Edward turned to her and asked politely, Do you think the captain has a little office where I might do some, where I might do some writing? What's the matter, honey? Okay, Shh, sit still, sit still, buddy, you're going to bump the body. There you go. Oh, that's my sweet. I love you, buddy. Hi, to Oh, hi, Toad. Shh, we're reading, we're reading. Okay, shh, shh. Can we start over? Edward turned to her and asked politely, Do you think the captain has a little office while I might do some writing? Captain Tinker has gone down to his workshop in the cellar, replied Jenny. I'll take you through our house. I'm sure you'll find an office somewhere. Jenny led Edward and Checkers up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, she said proudly, Our house has three floors. This is the second floor. And, hmm, 
Suddenly, Jenny remembered the day when she herself was adopted by Captain Tinker. The captain, after rescuing her from trouble in the street, had brought her into the same house and allowed her to explore it by herself, the way cats like to do. So Jenny told her brothers, You may explore the second floor. I'll wait for you downstairs. Jenny returned to the living room and waited on the sofa. While she waited, she could hear the brothers exploring overhead from room to room. With each step and sniff they made, she felt that Checkers and Edward were becoming more and more a part of this dear home where she had always been the only cat. Soon Checkers came pattering down the stairs. Edwards has, has found an office, he announced to Jenny. It's in a closet behind the captain's rubber boots. Look at him, you see him? You see him? Yeah. <laughs> behind the captain's rubber boots? Jenny gulped. That was a place where she liked to doze on rainy days. And it was raining now. The storm which Edward had predicted had burst on the garden. How dark the garden looks, exclaimed Checkers. It's as black as night. I guess I'll take a nap. Without asking Jenny's permission, he climbed into the captain's armchair and fell asleep. Well, Jenny wished that Checkers had chosen another place for his nap. I know he's I know he's tired, she thought crossly, but I'm the only cat who's ever slept in Captain Chinker's armchair. Then she wondered what Edward was doing. I bet he isn't writing at all. I bet he's snoozing. Jenny tiptoed up the stairs. As she passed Edward's office in the closet, she could hear the sound of heavy breathing mingled with delicate snores. Just what I thought, she said to herself. Well, if everyone else can take a nap, I have a right to take one, too. Maybe I'll feel better after it. Jenny went into the captain's bedroom, crawled into her basket, and fell sound asleep. When she awakened at supper time, she felt rested and cheerful. From now on, I'll share everything with Checkers and Edward, she decided as she went down the stairs. But when she entered the living room, her heart turned cold with jealousy. Captain Tinker was sitting in his armchair. On his knees sat Checkers. On one of his knees sat Checkers. On the other knee sat Edward, wearing a new red leather collar. Jenny rushed towards her brothers. The captain's knees belong to me, she cried. Get down! Checkers and Edward quickly jumped to the floor. Then the captain picked up Jenny and stroked her cheek, and he said, Jenny, don't be jealous of your brothers. I love you just as much as ever. But Jenny was too upset to believe him. Before she knew what she was doing, she had scratched the captain's hand. Then, frightened by her awful deed, she fled to a safe place beneath the sofa. Captain Tinker did not call after her or scold her. Instead, he walked quietly into the kitchen and watched, washed the scratch. Next, he opened the door of the icebox. Jenny could hear him take out the supper food, warm it, and fill through the three plates on her tray. After that, he returned to his workshop in the cellar. I know why the captain has left him, he thought Jenny. He wants me to make friends with my brothers. Maybe I shall never speak to them again. Anyway, I'll let them eat their supper by themselves. She listened. What's wrong? That isn't nice. No, it's not. She's going to learn her lesson. You know what jealous means, don't you? Yeah. That's, what does it mean? How could you say what jealous means? What do you think it means? What words would you use to say about like jealousy? Someone, uh, um. Yeah. Doesn't like them, Right. When you someone else has something you wish you had, like a toy or a friend or a, a snack, right? Mm -hmm. You wish you had that friend or that thing or that snack. But, the, but someone else has it, you get jealous. Is it nice to be jealous? No. no. You think Jenny, well, let's see what happens. What do you think? Let's see what happens. She listened, but, she, but could not hear Checkers and Edward go into the kitchen. She could not hear them in the living room. Fear gripped her heart. 
Perhaps she'd been so horrid that her brothers had run off to find another home. Jenny rushed into the kitchen. The brothers were not there, and they had not touched their supper. She rushed upstairs and could not find them anywhere. She ran downstairs and jumped onto the shelf. Checker's red retrieving ball was gone. Oh, that's it, she moaned. He's taken his ball and run off with Edward, and on a night like this, why, they might die of cold and hunger. I'll go after them, and I won't come home until I've found them. Jenny dashed out into the rain. She splashed across the garden, climbed over the fence, and ran down the alley into South Street. There she could not tell which way to turn. The rain had washed away all traces of her brother's paws. She decided to turn to the right and ran through swirling puddles while the rain drenched her back and filled her ears. On and on she ran, looking at every door, but she could not find her brothers. At last she felt she was running the wrong way. She stopped and asked herself, where would I go on a rainless, rainy night if I were homeless? I'd go to the fish shop and I'd wait at the door and hope that in the morning someone would give me some fish for breakfast. So Jenny turned back on her trail and worked her way through the soaking rain until she reached the fish shop. There, huddled in the doorway, sat her brothers. Checkers, Edward, she cried, I have been mean and selfish. Please forgive me and come home. Jenny, said Edward gravely, Checkers and I must try to find another home. We don't feel that you want us in your house. I do want you, she protested. Do you love us? asked Checkers. Oh, with all my heart, she cried. To prove how much I love you, I'll let you and Edward sleep every night in my own basket in the captain's bedroom, and I'll sleep in the cellar. Jenny, that proves you really love us, declared Edward. We'll go home with you, but we won't take your basket. We'll sleep in the cellar. No, I'll sleep in the cellar, Jenny said. No, we will, said the brothers. I will, insisted Jenny. Well, then she added quickly, let's not argue now, for we should hurry home. I want to find the captain and beg him to forgive me for scratching his hand. Jenny and her brothers ran home through the rain. When they reached the house, they found the captain waiting anxiously for them with bath towels to rub them dry. Or do they look cute? What do you think? I think they look cute. As he rubbed Jenny's fur, she tucked her chin in the hand she had scratched and begged him to forgive her. Oh, that was just a little scratch, said Captain Tinker. You made up for it when you ran out into the rainy night to find your brothers. Then Jenny tried to tell the captain about the sleeping basket, but he just said briskly, Oh, go now and eat your supper. She went into the kitchen with Checkers and Edward and ate supper. After that, the captain said to her, it's very late, and time for all good cats to be in bed. Come, see what I've built for your two brothers. Jenny and her brothers followed Captain Tinker up the stairs. In the room next to his bedroom stood two little bunks that he built one above the other. Each bunk had a warm red blanket on it. Now no one will have to sleep in this cellar, cried Jenny happily, while her, bro her brothers rubbed their backs against the captain's legs and thanked him. Checkers chose the upper bunk, Edward climbed into the lower one, and everyone said good night. Jenny crawled into her basket in the next room, and the captain went downstairs to smoke his pipe. Outside, the rain beat at the window panes. It's good to be indoors on such a night, thought Jenny with a yawn. She closed her eyes, but she could not go to sleep, for she kept worrying about her brothers. It would be terrible if they'd run away again. After a time, Jenny crept into her brother's room. She found the checkers had come down into the lower bunk and cuddled in Edward's arms. Oh, how peacefully the brothers slept. The longer Jenny watched them, the happier she felt. She also felt that someone should be thanked for all this happiness. So she went downstairs and she said good night again to Captain Tinker. What do you think? Good. Did you like that story? Huh? That's nice. It's good that the brothers found a new home. And Jenny and learned to share. The next one's called How the Brothers Learned to Dance Club.
That's right. That's like Jenny did. That's right. But isn't it nice how the Jenny learned to share with the brothers, right? Just like you and your brother.